friends we are discussing about the landslide so far we have discussed the natural causes with special focus on earthquake and geological condition etc now we shall continue how man made activities trigger the landslide this is a picture of the karwar coastal land satellite image we have used to show how the man made activities have triggered the landslide this is the vegetation cover as we have obtained from satellite image of 1990 there are two types of images means image we get is a raw it is called fails color composite when we process it we call the processed land set image where true object for example forest is a green we indicate in a green color in fails color composite forest vegetation cover is shown in red color because it is well absorbed in infrared okay now let us not uh, focus on that aspect much this is a processed image we have the green patch which is showing the vegetation the image which we have obtained in 1990 i focus the same area see here how much the dark green colored they have diminished the dark, dark green color dark green color dark green color these were the thick forest now in this image that dark green color disappeared this is the image of 2000 means in that 10 years so much of deforestation has taken place and these are the area where the severe landslide has occurred in 2009 at karwar this is one beautiful example how the deforestation can affect now this is another image this is we have processed map these are some of the lineaments fracture zone major fracture zones we call faults or lineament how lineament and the earthquakes are interrelated this is a 2004 earthquake of a 4.5 richter scale at yellapur there is some 19 20 km somewhere along this close to this line we have kalache a place huge entire hill collapsed and brought to imagine a hill of more than 100 meter brought just to the ground level that is more than 100 meter just a plain region that is associated with one more we have the lineaments near a karwar i draw your attention of 2009 landslides what happened i give a rough picture there is a railway train path track it has crossed the train here means it has crossed the lineament and here somewhere here or here 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 all have earthquake happened what exactly happened this is a railway line train passed here this is the major lineament and because of passage of train the vibration and all along this lineament materials became weak and slided and this is the kadwar and here all these the landslides in the 21 sites it has happened this landslide is directly we relate this to vibration caused by the passage of train we are not denying that railway line is required or not yes but in the process 
there was a river they have blocked for construction of railway line and this drainage is deviated. This drainage is deviated and in between there is a earlier drainage path that is now buried. During heavy rain, heavy rain, ground is so much saturated and the drainage path is modified, buried. Now it flown underground. A hill below that a drainage and that drainage caused horizontal movement of the hill slope and landslide. Means anthropogenic activity. In the previous slide I have shown deforestation. Here I am showing the natural drainage path we have blocked and changed its route due to heavy rain it the drainage saturated ground tend to flow and sliding. Near Yellapur the earthquake lineament and for the road work they have excavated near Kalachi there is also landslide. Natural cause yes in addition to that the man made activists trigger the landslide. So what shall we do? There are several methods to prevent the landslides. We shall try to understand one by one. What are the preventive measures? One is the slope treatment. Whenever we have to excavate for many purposes, excavation is inevitable. So when we excavate, as far as possible, the slope we develop should be well below the angle of repose. Many times it is possible, especially in a soil rich layer or weathered soil, it is possible to cut the slope is that the slope is well below the angle of repose. This is one method. Second is the proper drainage. Just now two examples I have quoted. Then also I have said drainage is a cure, water is a cause. If we have so much joints, 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 example here we have here, here, because of heavy rain, water percolating through this can lubricate and cause this material to slide. If I have a drainage, at a regular interval I have a drainage and take out the water. So whatever the water get collected, if I provide a drainage like this, it removed. Whatever the water get collected, if I provide a drainage, removed. Whatever the water got collected, if I provide a drainage, removed. As and when, wherever possible, we remove the water, it do not percolate further and cause the landslides. All along the hill slope, Nagzari powerhouse, from Sykes Point to Nagzari powerhouse, you find at a regular, at every regular interval, this drainage that is to remove the water so that it do not percolate and cause therefore proper drainage is essential especially in hilly area, rainfall area where we have jointed and weathered rocks. Grouting and rock bolting, rock jointing. What is this grouting? In the next picture I show rock bolting and rock jointing is suppose this is the hill slope we have regular joints cracks etc like this suppose this joint block this joint block because of heavy rain it may tend to first this joint block will fall then this block will slide then this block will slide this is the process so this joint block first slides and then this one, then this one. If along a hill slope, if such is the nature, 
I connect these two block. I connect these two block. I connect these two block. What happened? This block is connected to this block. This block is almost sitting horizontal, will not slide easily. If this has to slide, it also should slide this one. But this do not have tendency. Again, this block is tied to this. If this block has to slide, this one also should slide. But this is again connected to this. This also should slide. If this is connected to like this, this also should slide. Means entire hill has to slide. That much amount of huge force, if not developed, it do not slide. What I am doing? I am connecting one joint block to another, to another, to another. I am joining. What is, how I do? If I have a rock block, a jointed block like this, a jointed block like this, a jointed block like this, I drill them. Inject a cement slurry. Now, because of this block and this block are now connected, it is through cement slurry injection, I am connecting different joint blocks and keep them. They are now keyed. This is rock jointing. Bolting is similar. Some like this, I put a nail to the wall and then put a thread like that. We call the bolting. Similar way, uh, an iron rod is sent into connecting two or three blocks, connecting two or three blocks, an iron rod and then put a net like that. Then this and this are sealed. Of this commonly we find in a tunnel section where joint blocks are jointed or bolting technique. Grouting is another technique where we inject cement in a high pressure into these cracks. These cracks are filled. Once cracks are filled, water do not percolate and there is no question of lubrication and there is no question of a sliding. Therefore, rock bolting, grouting, jointing are especially ideal techniques where rocks are jointed, not loose soil I am talking about. Loose soil, different technique, hard rocks, but they are jointed. If I have a loose soil, what I have to do? I have a similar grouting method, but special chemicals I add such that this can go and react with the soil and solidify, consolidate, bind. What we have a concrete, loose sand, loose aggregate, cement, slurry, we put for our slab or column. Once it settles, to increase the settling process, we add gypsum to increase the settling. That means they bind it better. A similar process into the soil, I inject a specially chemical treated cement slurry, it is nothing but a cement slurry but with a special chemical so that it binds all the soils inside and once the soil is stabilized, their porosity, percolation capacity is lost, then it becomes stable. Afforestation, in the previous picture I have said how these, see these are all, now if I focus because these are all the area where steep slopes, high rainfall, weathered soil, thick soil cover, afforestation can be a solution to minimize. What exactly is the afforestation, forest or vegetative cover does? It not only sends the, its roots into the soil, soil has certain porosity. Some external material enters 
that material has to make a space for it. A root can increase the pressure on the soil cover. Soil particles are now held compactly. Means vegetation growing tree sends its root as the root grows they widen the particle or uh, so they widen uh, the compress the particle make space for it and thus the soil particles are now forced to bind themselves thereby their porosity is reduced therefore afforestation helps in one way by growing root second is on the surface reduces the flow of water that is velocity of the water flowing along the hill slope is checked soil erosion is controlled soil creep we have heard similarly the soil erosion erosion is one because of differential erosion especially at the foot of the slope hill slope we have and afforestation can control that velocity of the water if controlled erosion is controlled this is another way afforestation add, acts and adds in another way also in protection if we have a good vegetation even grass small plants etc they grow all around and they bind the soil and therefore that helps in reducing the landslides and percolation of water. What is a terracing? Terracing is if this is the hill slope, I cut them, I cut them, I cut them. Now, because of this, this is whatever the material may flow, because of horizontal condition, water material do not flow material do not flow, material do not flow. I check the materials then and there only. If any material slided, they get blocked. If any material slided, they are blocked. They are blocked means huge mass do not accumulate at any given point, given place. Therefore, by terracing, I reduce the velocity of the water. It is the ability to carry the material and it enables me to drain them easily. Therefore, along with the drainage, if by terracing, I can reduce the velocity of the water, material carrying capacity, easily I can drain them, thus I can prevent. Therefore, terracing is considered as another important method. Now, this we commonly find along the Maharashtra, Deccan Trap, steep slope, Bombay, Pune Bombay road, we find steep hills, there debris flow, etc. And to prevent a kind of mesh like and then nail them and thus they prevent the debris flow along the slope. This is another important method wherever debris flow is a common in hilly area, especially in uh, highway side, these uh, things we find common. So, this is another, this also similar way, but loose materials also involved in addition to the debris flow. Technique is similar, materials are different. Now, what is grouting just now I have said? This is a retaining wall also we construct. We also have regular pressure can be withdrawn and the hill slope or deep in we can inject the cement slurry. This is the way how the slurry flows. This is the way how the slurry flows all around the bind the materials around them. Thus in a highly deeply weathered soil steep slope, heavy rainfall area, one technique is not adequate. I have to follow several techniques. I follow, yes, this is terracing, 
retaining wall, retaining wall, keep them grouting all I practice. Now I ensure confidence level is high now. I am able to control a combined method of retaining wall, terracing like to hold back the soil and increase their stability through grouting or chemical or simply cement slurry grouting etc. both to seal the joints as well as to increase the binding capacity of the soil. These are some of the techniques followed to prevent the landslides. Yes. Now, after knowing this, we will have an idea about which are the highly sensitive area for landslide. We call slide prone area, very high hazards. These are the high landslide prone area in a high sensitive zone to low sensitive zone. What are all the practices I have to follow to prevent this? This map helps me to get an idea. These are high, this here, here, these are high hazards area like this, these are all low hazards area, plateau region, not very steep slope, etc. These are all mostly low rainfall area, etc. These are all plateau region, landslides are very rare. All along the western Ghats, yes, Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra, yes, we have severe landslide area. So, also here. So, this map gives us an idea about the area where I am working for my civil engineering project. What are all the precautions I have to follow? What could be the magnitude risk involved in treating, interacting with the ground? for excavation, construction, etc. So, this is an important input for us. Friends, we shall go to the next topic. Uh, this is another natural hazard. Although it is not directly related to the earthquake, but it also causes severe damage and it is added with the sea waves something. And we now discuss the cyclones. What is cyclone? It is in a different place, area, country. It is termed with a different name also known as a typhoon or hurricane. We call generally cyclone. What exactly is a cyclone? It is a general term for weather system, modification in the weather uh, system in which winds rotate inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure. Low pressure developed, a whirling winds develop, how they cause damages? It is a general term for that. For large weather system, the circulation pattern is in a counterclockwise. If this is a clockwise, this can be counterclockwise in direction. In the northern hemisphere, and the clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. This, if this is, this is the pattern, southern hemisphere. If this is the pattern, the northern hemisphere, that clockwise and anticlockwise depends on whether it is a southern or northern hemisphere. There are different types of cyclones. Say we have tropical cyclone, extra tropical cyclones, and tornadoes. These are different types of cyclone. Now, this map 
defects. These cyclones are mostly confined to the tropical belt. World's largest number, means maximum and high intensity cyclones are common in this area. Now you see the average, these are all the numbers, every number of cyclones how that have happened in the decades. We have frequently cyclones occur along this belt, low pressure area, low pressure belt is de developed in the sea and associated with this low pressure then uh, waves modification, high energy waves uh, travel, there is a heavy rainfall etc. and they cause the damage. The damage is somewhat similar to that of a tsunami in terms of the waves that cause the coastal area damaged. Yes. A tropical cyclone is a rotating low pressure weather system. We have seen in land also often the wind swells carries the dust and other lighter materials into the air in a rotating column like it's a rotating low pressure weather system that has organized thunderstorms but no friends. We have when waves come that is a direction. Tsunami waves come in a direction that is a front we call. But this has no front. They form over warm ocean water. Just now we said these are tropical. Tropical belt we know we have sun rays fall nearly vertical and therefore water mass is heated up and therefore we have warmer ocean condition. Once the warmer condition lift the air, pushes the air, low pressure developed here, all those things. Tropical cyclones with maximum sustained surface winds of less than 39 miles per hour are called tropical depression. What is a tropical depression? If we have the winds that generate and has the speed of less than 39 miles per hour are called tropical depressions. Those with maximum winds, sustained winds, continuous, not just a fraction, for a long time, that is we call sustained. Winds with this much of velocity for a longer duration of time or even higher are called tropical storms. We have, we have tropical depressions, tropical storms, okay. When a storm maximum sustained wind for a longer duration wind reach 74 meter per, sorry 74 miles per hour, they are called hurricanes or typhoons. These are different types. Hurricanes form over the Atlantic Ocean or Caribbean Sea in front of the West Indies or East, sorry, West Coast of the Africa we call Atlantic Ocean. These are all common. Typhoons form over the Western Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean we have Australia here, here and to the west of that we have this. These are different types and called by different name in different and these are some of the areas where we have the cyclone. Extra tropical cyclones are low pressure system that from outside of the tropics. We have said a tropical, now this is extra tropical outside the tropical region this is low pressure system that develop there also we have the cyclone and it is in response to a chronic instability of the westerly wind so we have said low pressure developed here 
इनस्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द वेस्टर्ली विंड दीज साइक्लोन्स आर जेनरेटेड बिकॉज दिस इनस्टेबिलिटी इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन लार्ज हॉरिजोंटल टेम्परेचर कॉन्ट्रेस्ट वी हैव इन सी टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन ओवर द एरिया एंड इफ वी हैव लार्ज एरिया टेम्परेचर वेरिएशन ओवर हॉरिजोंटल we have temperature variation vertically also in the sea if i have this is the sea water as i go deeper and deeper the temperature high medium low like this this is a temperature variation with the depth there is also temperature over this region and this temperature variation is large horizontal temperature variation it is contrast in temperature here and here it is varying that contrast concentrated region of temperature at some point there may be high temperature concentrated there are several reason why temperature is get concentrated we have suppose this is a land and this is the sea water if this side is the sea if this side is the land now whatever the water here is blocked from here by blocked from here by land means water do not come from outside and therefore this water body is now nearly protected water body does not mix with a vast sea large sea this water body is protected from a free mixing and therefore it is a concentrated temperature here the whatever the temperature is not dissipated not mixed with a larger sea therefore concentrated region this is this temp this concentrated regions of temperature change known as a front this is a protected water body this is the vast sea here this is the temperature change and this is the front they are characterize the tropical extra tropical cyclone this also causes cyclones this one of the way where cyclones are generated these storms populate the middle and high latitude we have said in the previous map we have said these are the tropical region extra tropical region and high altitude beyond <coughs> <coughs> tropical region beyond this extra tropical region beyond this high altitude regions so high altitude region yes are also sorry so these are also common where high latitude sorry so altitude means height latitude so these things are common north of 35 degree latitude in northern hemisphere and they are also called mid latitude cyclones if the barometric pressure of mid latitude cyclone fall at least 1 millibar per hour for 24 hours the storm is referred to as bomb cyclone bomb is a concentrated high energy that is what is a bomb cyclone is this yes a tornado is a rapidly rotating column of air extending downward from thunderstorm to the ground from high level to the ground level this is the mo most violent tornadoes are capable of tremendous destruction with wind speed up to 300 miles per hour tornadoes form in a region of atmosphere that have abundant warm and moist air imagine we have abundant warm and moist air both we have 
near the surface with drier air above and change in wind speed and wind direction with height above the ground. A combination of several factors involved in the tornadoes. We have this is formation of tornadoes. Now, what are the causes for this? Warm moist air over the ocean warm moist air over the ocean rises due to less density. We know when air is heated, it becomes lighter, it moves up. This air rises up and away from the ocean surface, leaving less air near the surface. All air masses move toward the upper layer of the atmosphere, moves up, there is a less air at the ground level creating a low pressure zone there. Due to surrounding high pressure area, we have a low pressure zone, high pressure zone around it, air rushes, air flows into the low pressure area. If I have a low pressure, warmer, dry air, it rises up and once the air moves up, low pressure is created, high pressure surrounding they rush into the low pressure area and thus we have eventually that warms up and form a cyclone. This cyclone makes the warm air above the ocean rise and cool the water below it to generate a clouds. With the contrast heating and evaporating process, the entire cloud and wind system spins and grow. This warmer as move up at a ground level, it cools and then the clouds develop. This cause heavy rain. Therefore, cyclones are associated with the heavy rain. With more speed, cyclone I formation means so the central which we have called we call this I formation or center part, takes place in the center, this I like concentrated at the center. This zone signifies the lowest air pressure inside it, the low pressure and calm and clear. The high pressure air from above flows down into this region. We have central like this. This uh, central part is clean like this and surrounding is all that the high pressure air forms above and flows down into the region. When the wind's rotating speed reaches 63 mile kilometer, kilometer per hour, it is called a tropical storm. However, when wind speed reaches 119 kilometer tropical cyclone formation takes place. So, severe cyclones we have this in tropical region. What are the effects of cyclone? Strong winds cause a damage to infrastructure. We have seen the falling of trees and other things, etc infrastructure uproots trees and lead to other catastrophes associated with it. This we have seen. Torrential rainfall lead to unprecedented floods and damages to the houses and buildings. Heavy rainfall associated with this. They cause floods and severe damage. Due to storm surge, sea water level rise. It is similar to the tsunami waves. Due to storm surge, sea water level rises and the coastal area are exposed to floods. High waves hits and spreads, reaches the coast and cause the floods. The rise in sea water level also erodes beaches and embankment. Once high waves reach the coastal erosion lost to the coastal property and severe erosion, a series of 
connected damages severe cyclonic storms resulting in floods can damage vege vegetation livestock the floods can damage the rain the wind the floods especially in the coastal area can cause multiple damages severe losses due to strong wind and flood condition the soil become infertile a bad soil saline water saline soil can come and spread on the land along the coastal belt that also possible water logged areas are created several days water get stored on the land and they decompose decay and so many things unwanted things happen the soil become infertile in the sense that cyclonic storms result in the loss of human we have read plant and animal lives and affect the country's economy which are the cyclone prone areas in india the west bengal andhra pradesh tamil nadu odisha this puducherry these are some of the cyclone hit areas do we have any control on the cyclone formation no but we can minimize the damage due to cyclone one is take precaution construct our permanent structure as far inside away from the coast because these are all the coastal area vulnerable and if we have any permanent structure well away from this we can prevent our property and life that is one way the previous experiences have suggested that some parts of the coast where there were a mangrove not mango mangrove vegetations wherever they have experienced minimum damage whereas some of the parts where we have removed mangrove vegetation that coast has experienced severe damage this mangrove vegetation functions in several way sorry that this vegetation mangrove is a salt tolerant plant or ecosystem it has several functions in addition to the biodiversity function in addition to the medicinal value in addition to the nutrient cycle along the coastal belt in the estuarine part it helps act as a defense system against tsunami waves and cyclones along the coastal belt in the intertidal zone that is if this is the sea coast during low tide this is the during high tide this zone we call intertidal zone wherever especially in the river mouth or silt and clay rich we have a kind of vegetation these vegetations sustain only in the salt water saline water rich and this act as a defense system against the waves it helps in two ways or three ways one is it checks the velocity of the winds and waves and that was the main energy if wind energy wave energy is checked the land behind it is get protected this is one way once the waves reach here they flow back and they carry huge amount of sediments and erosion this erosion can be protected because if we have the plants vegetation they checks the velocity of return flow once the velocity of the return flow is checked the land is protected from erosion once erosion is protected some other that is 
the land get protected and once the sand deposits are protected, the sand act as a buffer zone means a wide sandy beach facilitates the percolation of water, return flow become weak, thus a chain uh, defense system. Vegetation system checks the velocity and make the water to percolate. Once the water percolates, its ability to lose or remove the material is checked. Thus, mangroves help that way. Mangroves help in not only checking the velocity but also erosion and return flow velocity of the water is also checked. And therefore, afforestation along the coastal belt is considered as an effective defense system and this is also called bioengineering. It not only help us to protect the coast, economy of the local community also it increases and because of nutrient cycle, fishery activity get uh, attractive because of this. Therefore, bioengineering is encouraged along the coast. In addition to that, a hard core structure like concrete wall, etc., to protect us from these severe cyclonic waves, etc., are an essential system, defense system against the cyclones. Friends, with this, we conclude our discussions on some of the major natural disasters that occur due to the Earth's atmospheric system external force. Just now we have mentioned the cyclone. Internal forces that volcanoes and earthquakes and landslide which is the combined effect of the external force heavy rain etc. as well as triggered by earthquake. It means there are several natural disasters, disturbance forces the earth experiences in response to internal forces as well as external forces. What should be our defense system? mechanism to control and minimize. I hope we have provided a brief discussion on the natural disasters. Friends, I conclude.